Move for WAC. Wow. I got it. Object interaction. You can hold two objects. Swap objects between hand with... Oh! There it goes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. F to drop, R to throw. R to throw? Release when in the valley. Ah! Okay, that's new. <laughs> R to throw, F to drop. F to drop? What are these buttons? Oh, I can't crouch. Who did that? Huh? Uh, F to throw? No, F to drop. R to throw. <laughs> well, that didn't quite work. Oh, okay. Inspecting objects. Press E to inspect. Oh, so you pick it up and then... K fam. Got you fam. And R to throw. Oh, we don't- we're not going here. Do you want that mug, or...? Oh, a mouse trap. Must protect. Damn it! I wanted to put it over the mouse trap so I could protect the mice, but... There. Figured that out. Do you think we're the killer? That is illegible handwriting if I've ever seen one. <laughs> wow. Oh. What happened? Hi. Too close. Too close. Too close. Personal space. Ugh. Jesus. <sighs> oh. We playing some observation duty? <laughs> What's going on? You hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or I don't know, how. Oh. Christ, is this a joke? No, I. <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> Today! Wow! <laughs> I know what a cat is. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously? Do we have to do these checks every time? That's a lot and of buttons. Do you have to call them that? Reggie That's a lot of buttons. Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show. Yeah. And he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. Ooh, tapes. But if you're sure you don't want to... All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun. Yeah, with she's amazing. Ones. What are you complaining Buckle about? Folks, we're about to hit some tubularence. <laughs> let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. Got it. Ooh. I can Great. go through it. Now turn it off. All right, up next, phone line buttons. Uh -huh. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. Um, um, ah. All right, Peggy, ready for you on line one. This is stressful. Peggy, this is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's a riot. Great, and button two works just the same. So, 
Let's move to the Peggy button. <laughs> you mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm. Is there a Peggy mute button? Ha ha. They haven't invented it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. Mm -hmm. I labeled it for you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Peggy Forrest. 18. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. <laughs> I'm a turkey now, am I? <laughs> okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's this one. Sound blaster? Sound blaster. Front of the desk to the right. This? Nope. It's the thing covered in buttons. This? There we go. Oh. Always good for a cheap laugh. Oh, it's this. All right, we're soundboard. almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. Sliders should be right in front of you, like directly in front. All right. Oh, that's the record. That's overall working. volume. We done, Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Okay. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, you're live in three, uh, uh, two... This is a nightmare. 189.16. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. <sighs> Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works I'm gonna play you a scream, then you call and Guess that scream. Dude, this is your job. We need you to guess why they're <laughs> screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Which one is hey, it? Hey, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Do you think I got we're it? We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... I <laughs> hate when I've come. <laughs> really, Peggy? You want, you want me to scream? You know this show depends on my golden voice, right? <laughs> come on, Forrest, just do it! That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip! Oh, God. You gotta do Sorry it! Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Perturbed Yeti scream, falling from cliff, drowning. <sighs> falling from cliff. Yeah, hoo, 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 hoo. Or drowning. <laughs> well, folks. <laughs> Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win 
two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough. Fried dough. Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialed. Oh, amazing. Uh, oh, 20 to play the record. Uh, let's do the third one. Now it's time to go with the flow. And this is their hit, Crying for Help. Oh, God, Forrest, that was amazing. Thanks. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Lighten up, Forrest. That's going to be the highlight of my week. Nice. I saw someone in the chat be like, why are you so scared? It's like, whoa, you don't Forrest, have that? <laughs> it's like okay, Forrest, shut the music pure off. performance anxiety. Where it's like, even if even if it's a game, to be put in front of something that you're not uh, familiar with, and then her going like, okay, we're live in three, two, that's just like, whoa. What am I doing? Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the Hello, Leslie. operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Oh, shit. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No. Look, I found a body and I need your help. Why are you calling me? 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not going to be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. <laughs> Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Boy. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name, Sheriff Andrews? If I heard this on the radio, I'd be like, I'm at the sheriff's uh, office right now. What's going Wait, on? What? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and I found him. So why are you still, why are you oh calling God, us? Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Um... Well, is, is anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God, wait. Please don't tell <laughs> me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. <laughs> but Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. <gasps> Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. Why is she calling I us, though? I didn't see anything on my way over. Isn't there like Leslie, a neighboring station? You need to call station? over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. Yeah. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. Oh. I'll have to go there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's going to man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I have routed all 911 calls to come in to you. What? No, I'm sorry, but this is a terrible idea. We're not what on fit earth to, you think do, to do, that? do that. You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews. They sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? 
So I've heard. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. That's true. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that hole. Oh, cell. God, here we it go. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Mm. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's got to be another way in. Get a cup of water and, like, throw it in her face. There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. It's a better set. idea than mine. <laughs> Where might another set be? Mm. Well, the ones that are on her are probably the ones from the sheriff, right? So I've checked Have the you desks. Looked around the officer's desks. That's the first place I'd check. That was the first place I'd check, too. I couldn't find anything useful, though. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I am I sick? Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Please don't stare at me. I... Wait, that might be them. Oh. I, 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 I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you? It's interesting that a killer would kill the sheriff but save the deputy. Yeah, that seemed to go okay. Maybe Leslie was right. All this is life, yeah. Maybe we can handle this 911 business. That's the spirit forest. I think you're right. Though I have to say, I well, I really hope this is the only call like this we get. Same. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just going to sit you in your office chair. It oh, was the card. deputy. Yeah, that would make sense. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. Oh, if bad the idea. Came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. Why would he tie her up in the first place, not just kill her? That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risk right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? My car! My car is on fire! Did it just blow up? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? Oh, no whistling. Way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? Could still it be a deputy. Like whistling? Whistling? It can't be. <gasps> oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead. It's right? like an old. Killer that came back. But that mask, how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man. The whistling man. man. He's the whistling man. He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's. What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think. Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. I almost missed that. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think. Oh, God. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh, just... Into your pocket there, deputy, and yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait, how am I supposed to get us to the car? 
The whistling man is right there. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. At least he knows how to use a gun. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't even know how to check for bullets. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. Okay, there we go. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying. Deputy oh Martinez. God. What should I take? Ah. Uh... He's wearing a mask, so pepper spray would definitely kind of work, but not as intended. I would say taser. I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? Got it. I'm <laughs> just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. Do you hear that? No. No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Maybe the freak left. Be careful. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay. Deputy you know Martinez, what I would do? If you can hear me, it's time to move. I would lock myself in the cell. <laughs> Stay yeah. in prison. There you go. <laughs> Are you sure about this? With Bobby? both set of keys. No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again. You're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck. Well, good luck. Holy shit. This is the part where the killer comes out of nowhere, isn't it? <sighs> you know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Wow. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. You Are made you it there? to the car? Over. Hello, Leslie! So I, I guess you made it to the car then. We did. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat still out cold. Okay. I don't see the whistling man anywhere. Damn, and good job getting a person that's knocked out into a car. Away. Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! What's happening? Yeah! Take that! Taze them! Take off! Drive! Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Sounds like you handled that <laughs> pretty well. Forward, the lady in the back. Taser, definitely the right call. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. Oof. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you. I prefer doing it from your side of the phone. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek has a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while. Maybe two, three hours each way? Each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. You keep that pedal to the floor, then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in... Oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Okay. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie! Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez! <laughs> She sounds familiar, Peggy. Shocking turn of events. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. <laughs> we're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind, or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16
the scream. Awesome. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. Uh, um, late night lurker. Listen in to this next track from Late Night Lurkers, if you dare. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. Are our doors locked? I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Fifth Mooney in a freaky mask, whistling, Wait. and Mooney about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for oh, is it Harry Potter I'm thinking of? He just Mad Eye Mooney. Okay, what happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now, and it was Whistling well, Point. Ooh. It was on this night actually. Police cornered him and he jumped into the river. His That's Moody. Never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight. Yeah, it has to be a copycat. I don't know. So we're screwed. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? <laughs> I didn't realize no, that was Creek was 35. That large. No, 35 people. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-five, at best. Thirty-five, yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show oh. with a of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most of the Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the hey. low end? We can only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah He's famous. Whatever. The way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed Mr. Hotshot. Big ego. Yeah. I guess we're going to learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Uh, okay. Time to turn the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Please have a witty remark. Okay. What's your name and why are you calling in? You know my name. <laughs> I've come back from the dead to kill again. No one's safe. <laughs> Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Oh, maybe <laughs> you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice to us? I, I mean, me. <laughs> Not yet. I want to deal with him. Uh, we also want <laughs> a mega goal. <sighs> I 
Okay, so cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. <laughs> Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. And none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Stab in the twilight, the word. The hang-ups, let's go. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Peggy, the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. Yeah. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another call around the line. All right. Let's do this. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. This is awesome. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, Isn't this is a breach of privacy? And I need the cops now. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? Oh, God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the whistling man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually happening. Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car and nothing flat. But <laughs> jazz ran. Along the way. I never locked the door, so I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I... to 189.16 do we have any manuals hosted by me Forrest Nash your friendly neighborhood radio host mechanic and savior sit tight while the record spins folks this one goes out to you Sandra let storm riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the glam jam doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins talk motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Oh, God. Uh, down the hall? Oh god, oh god, oh god. So I need to find a car manual? So many locked doors, so few keys. I thought I heard whistling. Oh my god. Um. Um. Creepy hour, craft and work. No. Uh, truck there this is mechanical stuff 
This has to be important. Car theft magazine. I've borrowed it. Gonna need to- oh. Toilet. Toilet! Bathroom! Get out of here. And then throw it. <laughs> oh, not this one. This looks useful. Fix all cars. Maybe? Yeah, has to be that. Oh! <laughs> Door just goes all the way back. Place items in the tray to hold them while on calls. Tray? found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> Sorry. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, <sighs> the screen. Okay, here we go. What are you holding up, Sandra? <gasps> the creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I. Oh. I. Oh. Screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Mm, unscrew the steering column. Cover. Unscrew the steering column. Take the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. Okay, covers off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here, all paired up, and oh god, my If there is a four before a three and number seven. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay, we can do this. Start with the five. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Oh my god, if there is a 6 anywhere and doesn't start with a 5... This does start with a 5, so it's not the middle one. If there's a 4 before a 3 and no 7. Oh wait, okay. If there is a four before three and no seven, there is a seven. If there's a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six, okay, red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red and yellow. Oh, my wires. brain. <laughs> All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. Sanders amazing. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Strip the purple wire. Do not touch this live wire, okay? Brush the purple wire against the twisted wires. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and... Woohoo! <gasps> <laughs> buddy! <laughs> You just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. We Throw it. it. <laughs> sure did. Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to. Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. 
It's funky, it's groovy, it's stabbing the twilight by knife and easy. I still can't believe this is happening. Damn, that was so Gallows tense. Creek didn't already have to worry about. We what got Sandra mean? out. Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? It's nothing personal, Peggy, but it's not Chicago. Or, hell, it's not really anywhere. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Stab happy? Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible after a while. Not terrible after a while? My phrase coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. <laughs> anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night and that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Oh, oh, first chapter done ish. Caller on line one. <sighs> okay. Evening caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16. The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. <laughs> I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. <laughs> and uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons <laughs> for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. Oh, that's laughing. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the I thought it was an applause. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. But let me tell you, <laughs> the pizza we have is to die for. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh, thank you, folks. Oh, my God. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else off coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself... God damn it, you're just calling in to advertise your... Now show. you catch on? Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Ooh. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? No. Nope. In-flight check time. Christ. Our captain would like to remind you that the station is required by law to play advertisements from our sponsors. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. Done. Do you seek ancient wisdom? That's Do loud. you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate. Kung Rate. Warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror: the power of the alligator, the discipline of the tarantula, <laughs> the speed of the tuna, the tuna of the scorpion, and the wisdom of the bullfrog. <laughs> Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30 minute video sessions. Oh, video Ultimate sessions. Power and wisdom can be yours now 
No long disclaimer at the end? That was funny. Never forget the element of surprise! <laughs> You'll receive two additional VHS tapes, <laughs> the tornado technique, and karate love making. Call today! Oh my for god. Do people really buy this kind of thing? <laughs> Don't pretend like you're not interested. <laughs> Don't forget the element of surprise! Them. I might watch them, I guess. Yeah, I bet karate love making sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just get to the show. Wow, what a deal. <laughs> Only twenty four ninety nine, And I'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. <laughs> but unless they pay off more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. Welcome to The Scream <laughs> with me, Forrest Nash. Oh my god. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to mm. speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie... Oh, never mind. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, <laughs> if that's a concern. It's a little late for that now. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Uh, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Mm. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. Nice. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. Is he looking for oh. stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Hmm. i time. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. <laughs> the son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. It's a good so idea, right? Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, No, right? it's great. For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. Mm. I've got it. And thank God I've always been cool under pressure. 
Don't go anywhere. Mm hmm. What's he doing? You, you don't think the killer? He's got faxing him, do you? it, Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Okay. Oh, do I need to put on music? That was fast. How do you know our fax machine number? KFAM and the Gallows Reporter have a pretty long history. Hmm. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay. Not playing music, but... Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Mm-hmm. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Oh. This must be it. <laughs> How did he... Why is there drawings on it? Did he draw it and then fax it? There we go. Is there anything on the back? No. Okay. Hey, did you get the fax? I have it. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you uh Extension 1 you still 3 with us? I am. Oh yeah, 1 2 you get 3 my 4. Fax? Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Cubicles. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. So he's at four. The, situation. the exit is there. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next he's door. He's here. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. Should we have I'm him called to three? Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? I think one or three. So, the editor? Call the editor's office. The extension is zero three. Got it. This I'll is so scary. When you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? So he's going to the editors. So then I would hide where... Kitchen, archives... Kitchen, maybe you can get a knife. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. Why can we hear that? I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my <laughs> office. Quiet. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. Go. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. Did the killer pick up? But now what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. Mm. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw Okay. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs. Which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. They can't be right. There should exactly. always be a fire exit. I can move the furniture out of fire the way. Fire escape. But not quickly or quietly. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every 
every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? <laughs> Juicy secrets about how do we get him in there, though? Peggy, I don't think now is the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there and I lock him in, we can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not no gossip. phone in there. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Hmm. Is there a TV in that room? Maybe that could draw him in. Ah, of course. I turn it up, he comes in, and I get my head chopped off. Think of something else. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? A sports reporter, Hopkins. Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. <laughs> that might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Okay. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the Heck. whole town. There's still a lot to do before we celebrate. Let's just see how it goes first. Mm. What do you mean? He's not out of there yet. He's still gotta find the radio, unblock the stairs. I know, but we've got a plan for how to do that. And, oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew that. Nash. Hey, hey, hey. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. I didn't think of that. The radio works. If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Uh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. He's on the move. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead. You just... Oh, that's a good point. Hmm. But wait. We're the radio. We can just be quiet until you're ready. Eh, if you can do oh. that. Yeah, sure. 189.16. I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? Uh. Is it? Oh, God. It is, right? <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> Well, it's not on there. Just let him wait. It doesn't say it anywhere. I guess Peggy would correct me. The Scream. Gallows Creek's best and only phone in talk show with me, Forrest Nash. And me, Peggy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? The boardroom? So we need to go into the editor's office to go to the secret archives, right? Yeah. 
Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. Make the call. Okay, calling the boardroom now. <laughs> for my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? Mm. I'll pretend to tell Maurice to hide in the secret archive. The killer will hear me. Go check it out. And we've got it. Oh, I like that. Make the killer think he has the upper Maybe. hand and then bam! I appreciate the vote of confidence. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Okay, so we need meantime? to be quiet, right? I, uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Behind the door? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment is oh, alive so far, Nash. What do you reckon? I would say the cabinet? Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to okay. full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. It's going to be all right. We won't look for you there, I promise. And Mr. Russell, be quiet. It's important you make no sound. Quick, Mr. Russell, hide in the back room in your office. <laughs> Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the Whistling Man. <laughs> Forrest, you beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! If I'm being honest, I can't believe it either. <laughs> Thank God it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Right up Hurry, go! Time's All of the of essence. He's gonna break through the door. I feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview. Cops are like hours get away. Just get out of there. Let's see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. Dude, you should have told him there to are, get folks. out. The whistling man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. And play some killer tunes. Killer tunes, eh? Mm. What's a killer tune? Sure. Ah, oh, I missed Looks it. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're gonna interview me. Are you sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. All right, shoot. What do you want to know? Question one. Tell me about your family. Mm. What? <laughs> Come on, Peggy, that, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Oh, good nope. question. No, that's too specific. Too specific? 
I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. Did you do it? <laughs> don't be sorry, I'm not. Oh. Anyway, mm. what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Huh. What a coincidence. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. Well, that was dad. Damn. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. Whoa. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to yeah. hear Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. Oh. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Uh. What on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's K fam regulations. Mm. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Peggy. Hmm. The buzzer's on the front door. See you in a bit. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. Second floor stairway. I'm not getting in there tonight. Wait, is it? Ah, oh. oh. Yeah, why would anyone be here? A tape play on air. Oh, God. Oh, cool. Friendship quiz. Murder tape. Can you lock the door again? <laughs> that was probably for the best if you lock it. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. Should we All do right? it? Well, turn the music off and play it. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'll... I'm going to enjoy this. Wow. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I. Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but mm. be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home That's true. and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. Oh, time jump. 1 a.m.? Oh. Hey, we had a call come in. Collar, you're on 189.16, The Scream, with... Ash! Shut up, 
up and listen to me. Mr. Russell? What's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen! He's gone! The whistling man is gone! He's gone? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies, and we came back here to keep watch. Smart. Then what happened? Not do it alone. I'm getting to that. We came back here. The door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Did you let him escape? Of course we didn't. I demand <laughs> you retract that accusation. Damn it, Maurice. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you, it was locked. No way out of there. None. Maybe. Could I mean, he have hidden I know in it's it? crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... Do you think he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Vince? Oh, that's a good one. There's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. <laughs> Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dodge. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. He seems really spooked. <laughs> Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? <sighs> He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably right. But what do we do now? I wonder if he could have hidden in there. No, wait. Yeah, events is the best option, I think. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. They'll remove her from the suspect list. Uh. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches batten. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song 1980X. <laughs> All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Play me ASAP off air. Or try your call again. <laughs> Straight to voicemail? My God. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your back All right, conversation I've got has it. not honored Did our... Did we forget an ad or something? I don't know. It was buried in my work mail. I only just saw it. See what it says. Uh, play me ASAP. Off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. And he wrote it in purple. And? Purple is Reggie's angry <laughs> color. He only writes in purple when he's really pissed off. Purple message. All right, I'll put it on. I hope it's nothing serious. So what do I... Do I do it like this? Yeah, it doesn't actually let me slide it. I'll just play it. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank, I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest, mate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. Final Breath? I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest! You know, Roddy Snatcher? No. I used to be a big deal. 
Are you a big fan of Roddy? I love Roddy. I will always find you was my song. I wish we still I will always find you. Why do they all sound creepy? Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K Fan, not to me. Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. I don't think she can actually sue over that, but... Downstairs at reception. I don't want to go downstairs. Downstairs, downstairs is scary. Downstairs is scary. Uh, record, record. Stat. Hmm. Final breath. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. <laughs> uh. There it is. Okay, I got it. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Perfect. Wow. God, <laughs> Roddy's the best. <laughs> he is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst. Chat, the every time breath. she does that, you have to do it, okay? Otherwise, it doesn't count. Every time Peggy does this, you have to do it with her. Feels really good, I promise. And I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. Oops. I really hope it's nothing serious. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, <laughs> what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. <laughs> First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. <laughs> He's free today. Wow. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh, how to love. Most importantly, Aw, <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. Uh-oh. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? Really? Dude, you have a kid. Come face me, a true warrior at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Oh boy, here we go. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. <laughs> so get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, Keep your fingers crossed. He forgot for the most Murphy important part. Don't forget the element of surprise. Our hometown hero. He ruined it. Although, having heard that Master Robbie ad earlier, uh, well, don't get your hopes up too much. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Jesus. Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, <laughs> Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamboree, <laughs> Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. <laughs> we got 
Cat, Baby Crawling, <laughs> Balloon Popping, Balloons for Sale, Beard Contest, Horseshoes, Hay Ride, Hay Toss, Hey You There, Safe Donkeys and Ponies, Apple Bob and Firearm, Fireworks, Funnel Cakes, Bad Go, Seats, Bitten, Sand Licking, Cracker Cramming, and Cat Shop. Wow. And fish, <laughs> goofy, painting puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square <laughs> dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure all. The festival is brought to you by oh Mayor Willie Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley. Uh, that made me heat up. Last festival. Amazing. I can see why it's world famous. Best it's ad yet. Around here for us. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All this right, one folks, I haven't played welcome yet. Welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Wow. Let's see what our next caller will choose. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Who's there? Who is this? <sighs> Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them, or...? We sure did. You're in safe hands. Okay. Okay. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, Collar? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Mm. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. God. I won't. Just calm down. That sounds Tell so scary. Where you are right now. What's your address? I'm I'm Oh God. Maybe you can hide in your house? He'll find me. I know he'll find me. Can you run out back? No. What if he's outside? Waiting for me? Oh God. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? Bathroom. You live by a frat house. <clears throat> yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get them. Oh, God. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know. But... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. I can't do this. Damn. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. It's David Scopo with Moonlight. Peggy, okay. what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well, there's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can Grilling go to Spree. Chalupacabras. Chalupacabras? Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I think. Okay, Grilling Spree's there. So it's only that one and Ponty's Pizza here. We're here. She said it was a frat house with a lawn. It could be one of these here or here. Oh, I have like little markers and everything. That's it? Gallows Creek only has three places? Oh, three places? You know, Forrest, just for once, I think you should be thankful that we're not in Chicago. What was the third place? Oh, Chalupa Cabras. I thought that was what you could order at Grilling Spree. 
Oh, here. Okay. So how do we do the math? East side McCready Street will be closed 2nd to 9th September for maintenance. Is that now? What day is it? Oh wait, I can tell. Uh, it's 1987, September the 3rd. Okay, so McCready Street East side is closed. This one. But only east side is closed. Residents will be unable to access the connecting road between Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield Road. Uh, Haddonfield is all the way on the right. Rogers Avenue. Oh, here. Uh, okay, so this is all off limits then? Wait, how are we supposed to know it all? Oh, did she say it was pizza and beer? That is true. Pontex Pizza had the deal with the beer included. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related, and maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. Okay. God, where to start? I was ready. I, I decided, but <laughs> if I were a partying frat boy, we have a food critic, Pizza right? Pizza and beer. Chatter Brad or uh... Chatter Brad. <sighs> I just have to look around. Let's see one of the desks. Go Gallows High, I guess. Wins big game. Oh, you can't read any of it. <laughs> um. Oh, chili cook-off champion. Chalupa cabra. Hmm. The flavor profiles are some of the best in town. Excellent. For the hundredth time, it's an audio medium. People won't get its excellence and excellent. Yeah, they would. Why is the music creepy? Oh, that's what I put there. Oh my god, I thought someone slid something under the door. A promotion, huh? Maybe if I find the pizza box. Garlic bread, free sample. We've pinned our latest offers and deals on the outside of the box if you want to read them out on air. Grilling Spree's new offer is terrible. We think you should read our advert instead. Ponty's Pizza. Connoisseur like you needs to try our three-hour slow roasted pizza. Three-hour pizza? Ate the garlic bread much like your show. It was mediocre. The deals worth checking out, though. Damn. Roasted. <laughs> What's this? Grilling Spree. I better see what's on this tape. Hmm. Okay. That's probably it for now. And we should check the staff kitchen. I'll put this tape um, at my desk. One sec. <laughs> um, let's see. So the staff room is here. Okay kitchen okay let's see oh, sad fridge any pizza I'm looking for a pizza box but I didn't see it Out of order. <laughs> oh, here. 
rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Well, for every point offer. that you win, big game. Oh, and they won. We just saw the newspaper. Ah! Go team. Has to be that. Scary, scary, scary. I don't want to be here. Dude, the music, no. I need to go back to my safe space. I wish we could lock every door. Hey, find anything useful? Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. Let's do it. When you're ready, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. We got this. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Hey, dude, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> may I take your order? Uh, it's pizza, right? It was pizza that had the beer. One free beer for every point that Galahai wins in order to choose his big game. Garlic bread? I need some garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread! Can't do! <laughs> Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? Can you add a note to the order that says call to KFAM? KFAM are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. <laughs> and now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our <laughs> delivery workers. <laughs> um. You're gonna love this next track. Uh, I could have checked grilling spree and I didn't. I guess I didn't need to. I knew the beer thing was big. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. You mean equally awful? No, equally good. But if I had to order, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. <laughs> right, so between grilling spree and chalupa cobras. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good Ooh, nachos? Oh, yeah, nachos. It can change depending on the day, you know? No, 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 yeah, nachos. Always Maybe nachos. I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! <laughs> this is Fred Man Parker! Hey, hey, hey! Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream, and... Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a Goose friend. <laughs> sure, whatever, it it's Goose. Now, listen, I... Goose, dude, get your ass to the party. We got so much beer! <laughs> listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brother's awaiting for you. We need I'm to know the goose. location, I, right? How can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian, what do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the radio man can control. 
play us the flow. Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, radio man. You got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Forrest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Stream. Forrest, it's the killer. Okay, here we go. Clive. Oh, the party has arrived. Oh, thank God. He's good. And... Oh. oh, is that you, Radio Man? <laughs> Don't worry. We brought the beer. <laughs> good times are here. I could use a drink. <laughs> thank you, Forrest. <laughs> You're welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker. And Yay! Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. <laughs> hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia she said? She said earlier? Clive. What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Yeah. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive. But your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. Hmm. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local <laughs> small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. <laughs> it's a small business. family friendly place. <laughs> Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Good Thank for you. you. Oh, I'm really living the American dream. Here in my business. <laughs> Ponty. What is your business anyway? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, <laughs> but uh, since you ask. Yeah. Pizza, the best and only pizza place in town. Come on down. I recognize his voice as soon as his axle God broke. God damn it, Ponty. <laughs> no free ads. <laughs> I mean, He's amazing. I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Pontes did say Virginia. And he did it put I in the note, mad. yeah. Peggy, that sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. Amazing. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Ooh. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. <sighs> okay. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hello? Am I on air? Hi, Eugene. Sure, caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. <laughs> Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. <laughs> I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Go home to your parents. Eugene, 
You really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead. Oh, actually. Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on. I hear some rustling. I guess she came out. No. Molly, I'm in the middle. It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. <laughs> Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right. I... Listen, Eugene, breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. What I... are we going to do? Oh, we I'll did see a maze, Molly. actually, downstairs. But please, hurry! Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. Word. How the hell am I supposed to get in through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a Maze Maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the Maze Maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has Maze Maze stuff somewhere. Mm -hmm. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. God, help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception, never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Mm -hmm. Ring any bells? Right, yeah, sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses, just go and find something to help us. Okay. I picked it up earlier, I think, so just gotta get that file. I'm really worried that at one point I'm gonna open the door and he's just gonna stand there. Yeah! This. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Okay, so based on what he's seeing, and he was in the center. There's a little guy on the right! <laughs> Funny. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? Uh, never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene Where's Paul, the exit? Were away. Oh, there. He's on line one. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. Okay, here we go. I Thingy. hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I just ran, and I... I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad, facing a tractor statue. Okay. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, it's not on a timer. Okay, so I know where he is. Okay, so we need to get him up. Oh, but that's a dead end. Oh. Which road connects to it? He used to go on the left hand side. He needs to pa go past nine. Six and seven. Four, three. Okay. Okay. So if he's facing the tractor, he needs to go left. Go left. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Try to right. I went left, then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. Okay, go backwards then. Go backwards. Over. I'm at a 
crossroads. Okay. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Uh, left. Go left. <laughs> There's a chainsaw? No, Eugene! There's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. Uh huh. Nothing to my sides. Okay. Go right. Go right. You're almost there. I can't run. Much more. I just passed a cordon silo. Uh-huh. Didn't see anything else. Okay. Please. Where do I go? He passed it? Didn't see anything else. So he didn't go by the beehives. So, if he went through there and he didn't see the beehives, that means he took the other road and he went past that. So he's, so he's facing down on the crossroads, hopefully. So that would mean take a right. Go right. And that should be the exit. Go, 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 go. And my bike's still here. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, thank you, Forrest. I, I love you, Molly. <laughs> that was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. I'll throw it. By the way, yeah. why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, <laughs> I think she probably never <laughs> left home. <laughs> One fifty. And thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. <laughs> Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. <laughs> Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Collar, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, <laughs> The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be... Good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? What's going about? on? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Uh, and why? Did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. Hmm. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Wow. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. For shame, Peggy, for shame. <laughs> I'm sorry Brad was being a dick. I... thanks, Forrest. Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Dawn. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Hmm. I feel like there's something about that. Her calling. Of all the songs to request. Why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy. What did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. 
Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Mm. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Pizza Murphy? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Uh, no, that was Ponty. Oh, uh, the one that challenged him. Uh, that's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn Gleason. He came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but... Oh, oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need so Where's the fire now, department? I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? What? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! What? Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. Oh my God. We can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. Myers Lane. And there's Lane. Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Uh... Gala's Waste Disposal. She said Myers Lane? Oh, posted notes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alex, corner of Haddonfield, right next to Romero. <laughs> Romero Street. Right next to Romero's Haddon... Corner of Haddonfield Road. So, there. But there's also the maintenance today. Catherine lives at the west end of Myers Lane. Old Man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. I don't really understand the... The text on the right. East side McCready Street is closed. Residents are unable to access the connecting road between Roger and Haddonfield. So is that just this tiny bit? Like these, this tiny bit here? Is that what's closed? Oh wait, Roger's Avenue. Connecting road between Roger's Avenue and... So this whole bit is closed, maybe. Corner of Haddonfield right next to Romero. So he's here. There. Catherine lives at the west end of Myers Lane. West end? So like here somewhere? Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. That's it. So we have those three and this road is closed. So Jericho is a great pick then, right? But he's old. Because if this road's closed... This this is probably fine. Haddonfield's probably fine. Catherine is second best. Yeah, let's just go with Catherine to be safe. Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. And they didn't get there in time. <laughs> call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... Oh, God damn it. I'm going in. <laughs> oh, my reception is terrible in here. 
God, my eyes stink. Murphy, tell me what you can smell. What do you think, genius? I told you earlier. Fire! I smell fire! This isn't helping. Murphy, can you see anything at all? Yeah. I got a little flashlight. Looks like old cans, bottles, and newspaper. What does it say on the newspaper? It's uh, the Henderson headline. What was that? My reception is terrible in here. Please, Fort, tell me where to go. Go to recycling. Recycling. Got it. Come on, Catherine. It's because you guys said, I was like, oh yeah, that is recycling. Cans, newspapers. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy. Do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man! What do you want from me? <laughs> well, you wouldn't shred... Oh wait, maybe you can shred cans. Just tell me what you can see, Murphy. I've already told you! Just a bunch of bottles, cans, newspapers... Do you hear anything, Murphy? I hear my heart about to pound out of my chest. Put the receiver up to the lid. Put it up. Crusher? Catherine, go to the crusher. It sounds like either, honestly. I mean, scream. Henderson disposal. And wide reach municipal. What does it say on the newspaper? It's the Henderson headline. What is that? We have no time. Which dumpster? Open the Henderson container. I mean, wouldn't it have to be locked or something? Oh, yeah. He could have just screamed though, she should have heard that. Did they make it? Get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host. Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. <laughs> oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding <laughs> they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. <laughs> you're a prick, Teddy. 
Uh, right. Thanks, Teddy. Now, are you... Teddy, you lowlife! This is not the time to promote your damn campaign! I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. And what's that? A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Yeah, how about the goddamn serial killer? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda... Ho, 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 now. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable... Un-American? You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Can we hang Don't up on him? Don't you dare it? speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take Press office. Press the boo button. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Uh, an ad. Don't think I've played this one. Teddy Gallows Jr. Oh, God. Family man. A devout nope. <laughs> <laughs> you will learn the four oh yeah, that was a funny one too. <laughs> the power of the alligator. I mean the discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. Grilling wow. spree we haven't heard yet. Element of surprise. Never forget the element of surprise. If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS tapes, the tornado technique and karate love making. Call today. Hell yeah. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Uh, hello. Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I... I think he's killed some of them already. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god! Well, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this! Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? <clears throat> Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. What? I'm at the end of a hall. Old murder house? And there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? I always say bathroom, because you can lock it. Go to the bathroom. Okay, I'll... I don't think we can run. <laughs> oh, God.
Oh. Oh my god, that's so mean. What? 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 Are you Are you kidding me? Okay, what the hell is going on here? Dude. <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke. Jeez. Wait, isn't that Jimmy? That wasn't funny, you sicko. Of course I called the cops. But some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Jimmy, everyone, it's really not safe to be out. Please, go home. <laughs> it's just a prank, Forrest. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid. Oh my god. Died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. Oh, he's actually there! Uh, wait. Oh no. Who, uh, who are you? Oh no, I'm dead! <laughs> Was that Jimmy who died? You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and. Of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Jimmy got stabbed. I'm sorry about Jimmy. Thank you. This is crazy forest. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, it sounds like a whole gru group if of people, that, though. We're gonna get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forrest, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh... <sighs> We're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Mm. Or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. And I don't know anything about your friends. <sighs> these damn kids The friend never quiz. Learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trap kids out there. I forget which ones I've played. Here comes one of my favorites. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah. She has Jeannie. the tiny disc. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Okay. I remember. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. God, everything, every time I hear Peggy, I just think Peggy 18. She's here. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. This thing. Friendship quiz. This might work. 
What was that? How was that noise? something get thrown or fell or hey you find anything that'll help <laughs> us out yeah i found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it if you think that'll help then good enough carries on line one whenever you're ready time to turn the music off this is forrest nash back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night carrie are you there yes We've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Peak Mount Everest, if it's a climb. Heather? Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Okay. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Most likely to end up in prison? Or escape prison? Jennifer. She has to pick a lock. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, Kay. that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then it's part four. Okay. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. <sighs> It's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. <laughs> you're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? David and uh, Seth? David, Cynthia, and Scott. Oh. Well, it has to be Hot David then, right? Because Olympic athlete, good runner. Turn page over. Oh! Trip while running in a horror movie. Jimmy? Well, it has to be... It has to be Hot David still though, right? Hot David! Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you uh... You spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Win an Oscar. Lisa? Or Tammy. Either is fine. But Tammy is also least likely. Most like a car crash. So it has to be Lisa then. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally. Part six, we need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be, who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. I would say Scott, because he's good at go-karting. Oh wait, but he also is most likely to end up in a car crash. Cynthia. Chad. Hmm. Chad. J 
Tat. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope yeah, so. Let's hope. I would not want to be the one to pretend to be injured. God. What do we do? Do we play music or? Oh, the kids are back already. Oh. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Don't die. <laughs> Don't die, okay? You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter, to the roof. Go, Heather. Get off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Hot David. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. <gasps> oh, God. God. Oh, God. Dang. His face got cut off. Focus. Breathe. Right. Right. The van keys. Do it. Got him. Good. It's locked. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. Go, go, go. And Hot David should be back any second. Aha! I can't believe it's actually working. You're doing great. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends. Sounds like they killed him. <laughs> yeah, Heather! Quick, everyone to the van. Driver, take the keys. The damn gate swung shut. Can you ram it with the car? Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. This is so intense. Let me go. Mm. Go. Just drive. Oh, my God. Somewhere safe. <sighs> I can make it home. Carrie's final girl. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I. It was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great. Now plan. go. 
You get home. You get home now, Carrie, before he changes his mind. Right. I, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Damn. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents. She's not on a list, maybe? Yeah, I wonder. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the, the girl walking home in the dark. The deputy was a woman, right? Maybe he only kills men? Because he skipped the deputy as well. We had a call come in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Who is this? Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now Roller consider Ricky. you a friend, my man. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. <laughs> yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was this one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottom. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. That's sad. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. Hmm. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now, whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh hello, Max. <laughs> Max. He's a good boy. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue <laughs> dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate? Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. <laughs> but Maxie loves the ring, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxi appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for sure. us? Sure. Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxi's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Wasn't this a boogie Bye, one? Maxie. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but... It is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, he seemed yeah, th nice. that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? 
another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I mean, ah, I'll say... Carrie! Hey. hey. I, I just... <laughs> Carrie, she's safe. thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy, and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. And also, no you one picking so up the body. You're There's safe no now. one around. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't... Why am I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... Why let me go? Hmm... Jimmy was the one pretending to be the killer. Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean, if he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. That's the one that's this next on. One goes out to Carrie. Yeah. Oof. You know, so what intense. Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. Mm -hmm. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Okay. I wonder why she said to have a look around. I wonder if there's something to see. Might be good to check for things that maybe... A oh, barb! I think we should see other people. I hope we can still be friends. You owe me five bucks for the festival tickets. Damn. Cold. Creepy hour. What's that? Is that a ticket? For the maze maze. Have I been here? Oh yeah, the kitchen. From below. On the first night of filming, I screamed so loud somebody called the local police. I gave them an autograph and can we continued to shoot. It was so crazy. No killer in here? Okay. Can we go out the door? I need a key to get in there. Fire escape shouldn't be locked though. Just saying. Needs a key. What's this leakage everywhere? What's leaking so much? Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that for us. We have a caller. Okay. When you're ready, shut the music off. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, um... Is this Dawn? The girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song for us. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. She's kind of creepy. And I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Wait. We weren't live for that, were we?
Were we live for that? I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one? We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, Forrest. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Why does she want the record so bad? Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don. Uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest, Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. Hmm. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. What? <sighs> well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. What? Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... <laughs> Why don't you go? All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. <laughs> wait, wait, our fire door has to be... That's what I said. Yeah, it... Uh... You know, I never thought about it, but yeah, we should talk to. It should always be later. unlocked. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. One eighty nine point sixteen, the screen, with me, Peggy. <laughs> there she goes. Okay. I don't want to go outside, but the caller was right. If he was just at the murder house, then he should be far away. Wait, isn't this the alley? Yeah, this is the alley the officer got killed. Yeah. I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open alone. Where did she throw it out? Has to be on that side, I guess. Hmm. It's dark. Oh my god, I heard him. Here it is. Long Shh. ride home. Quiet. Of course, it locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. What are we going to do? Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. What? A, a door. Elevator or something. And that's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. See if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. Oh god. I should check the fuse box. Dude, we're so dead. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. You gotta be kidding me. Where am I gonna find those? They're not just- they won't just be lying around. Or will they? Why is that in an alley? That- that would not- and it was in water too. That is- very unsafe. I do not want to be here.
Gulp. 30, 60. Ah, oh, we need a 5. survive that fall? Of course you can. It's not that bad. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name <gasps> was? Clive? No! Was it? We have a janitor named Clive? I... Whoa... Uh What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. Um Okay, this is bad. This is very bad. Huh. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Dude, you are very chill for someone who just realized who the killer is. God, please let this be the last locked door. What am I gonna do? I guess the janitor might have a key. Can't open those. Screwdriver. Oh, key. Ah, there's the beautiful key. Should be able to get back to the studio now. Oh, I don't like this. Ooh. Okay. Piggy, 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 piggy. You're not gonna believe this. She's not gonna believe this. Isn't that such yeah, she's a good okay. song, folks? And now for Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive, the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind me. So I'll... 2.40. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement. Creepy board? Made oh. by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there, too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station. Wait, who's the sheriff then? The trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Oh my god. Okay. Gallo Creek Harvest Festival closed early this year. Tragedy struck. Big Wheel broke free from its support and rolled through town. Investigation currently underway. 
Former Gallows high football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career-ending injury as a victim of the festival disaster. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying him lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky and come back on his feet. Hmm. Marriage announcement. Kim and Peter. Gallows Creek game day. Wait, that's Chuck then, isn't it? Yeah. So, wait. Crime syndicate impounded. Criminal operation shut down. 24 arrests. Police have today finally put an end to the long-running car thief and crime syndicate. The arrests were made after a member gave up information on the co co-conspirators. The informant who asked to remain anonymous will hereafter be referred to as R.A. Walking free of no charges. R.A. Rebecca Allen. Um... Him. Beep beep, look out, tragedy. Gallows Creek yesterday afternoon, bus failed to stop, crashed in a fuel tanker. The deceased have been identified as Rudd Hewton Stein. Oh, Kim's husband. Mrs. K Stein. So she's dead. Two-year investigation into the festival is concluded. Investigators blame two engineers that were contracted in, for, in from the local power station. And Williams and Sean Everett were distracted talking about horror movies while assembling the big wheel. Uh, Ant Williams and Sean Everett. So, this one. Trailers for sale cheap. Tyler Wallace. Is the estate agent, okay. Sick of being a local celebrity, people are so mean to me. Only stole a few cars. Buy a new one, I'm selling my trailer and leaving town. I just want to get out of here, please buy it. That's the quote. Uh, so someone is trying to get out? Local legend takes to Manhattan. Infamous author of tell-all book, Diary of a Car Thief, moves out of Gallows Creek for a new life in the big city. She stole our cars and then she stole our time and money, said our reviewer, Jim Randy. She. Okay, that might be the lady that went free then. Because she confessed. Uh, Christine's gas and repair has been sold to a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. The new owner claims it will keep me busy on an evening. He is asked to remain anonymous. Diary of a car thief. That picture... Uh, that's Rebecca Ellen. So she's the car thief. Okay. 1987 Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention. Do you care about health and safety? Comes down to a yearly convention. Featuring special mystery guest, lead engineer responsible for the Gallo Creek Harvest Festival disaster. Lead engineer. And Williams? Yeah. Oh, so this is the same 101 on the picture. Sheriff Matthews warned citizens to look out for suspicious behavior after multiple car thefts. The crime wave of 70 will be stopped, I can assure you. We must work together to bring down this criminal organization. Sheriff Matthews. Car theft. Hmm. Okay, so what are we doing with this information? This is where they are. Okay, so trailer park. Uh, Chuck is in the hospital. And so it's the lead engineer at the power station. So Kim Walker is at the gas station. Christine's gas and repair has been sold to a man who won the lottery. 
Oh yeah, and they were doing lottery tickets. You're right. So he's gas station. I guess she's hospital because she got into the accident. Deceased. Okay, let's have a look. How's it going? Uh, it's not going well. Just to be safe. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. Okay. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? I'm good now. Thanks, Peggy. Then we probably no have problem. it, right? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Yeah, who is the next target? Probably Aunt Williams is like the most obvious one. Well, Rebecca said she was going to try and get out of town. Kim Walker is maybe dead. Chuck. Yeah, Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? Gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it, and... Oh, God. It, it's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I... Forget? For, forget what? Forget. No, no, man. I gotta get out of here. Hmm. Forgot something. Something was today. I, I think he ran off. Well... Fingers crossed that Chuck... Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Uh... Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Forrest! The whole goddamn gas station's got up! Damn! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. Town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Where is it? Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM. Let's play the song that she wanted. The stream. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. I can't find like I it. Said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Okay. I don't like this. You pointing at something? Hmm. The key. Was this always here? Wait, where are I you? I must have oh. missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Oh. Yeah, this is very different. Basement storage. Oh. 
Where would basement storage be? Oh, maybe that other door? Okay. Hey, Forrest! Oh. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom? Jeez. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay. Got a tape? Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Like there's a tape player there? Oh, it is there, but... Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? Mm. He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. We need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Wait, what? I was just getting into it. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Wait, so this is important? Alright, let's look at this. So there's a file and another tape there. Okay. When entering codes and commands, sequential key depressions must be made within four to five seconds of another. Okay, otherwise the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from its beginning. Be sure to observe this precaution when performing any of the procedures in this manual. If you make a mistake while entering, stop, press the asterisk, and start over. Okay. Immediately start the entry over. Aaron's code might be entered. Sure. Our state-of-the-art security system uses a six-digit code system. Simply enter the code into the keypad and feel total peace of mind. Oh, Starling, 4000. Default code for these features are listed below. Please change these codes imme immediately. Okay, so we remember those. Starling security, 2nd September, so that was yesterday. So they really just got it. Oh, Clive Atkins, maybe? C? Delivered, installed. Oh, wait. The hospital, gas and repair, Merle Ricky. Client opted for manual installation. Okay. So, where is that other place? Sounds so creepy. Oh, here. So there's a file and a thing here? Okay, there's another one. This looks useful. At 4 a.m. a call was received from a jogger. Miss Sanders Sharp reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Okay. Oh, September 3rd. Or, yeah, that's today. The 
Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Sanders Jazz Lady. Typically obtained by running through mm -hmm. foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. Okay. And then the next one is big box. Okay. Well, actually, I could take this one. There was a mattress here, like he'd been sleeping here. This is a different one. And another different one. Okay, so we skipped one somewhere. Barely see anything really. Is this it? God, it's so dark. Yeah, this is it. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating yeah, stress, elevated isn't it? levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Hmm. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. Post-mortem? Like it was trapped in a car door. But post-mortem? This has to be important. Virginia. We talked to a Virginia, didn't we? The deceased is a Caucasian male, age 18. Cause of death, drowning, is shown by the signs of asphyxiation. Abrasions found on the knuckles, likely from getting into fights in the past. Matches with known history of the deceased being aggressive. No other injuries were observed. And from the coroner's opinion, there's no evidence of foul play. Additionally, the, the preliminary toxicology report indicates the deceased had a high level of alcohol in their blood. Wait, there was no alcohol, right? It is of the coroner's opinion that the deceased went swimming while intoxicating resulted in its drowning. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Dr. Sullivan, we need to have a talk. That recording. Shut it off. Hmm. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek drawing closer to the anniversary. Mm. None of us are innocent, but I don't think we deserve killing. All I hope now is that I can save some folk from the worst that I can. I don't know. Do something to make up for what I did back then, I guess. Sounds like Clive was the old sheriff. So, hope 
Hopefully I've said enough for you. Hmm. So he got silenced. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. His employer, yeah. So he got forced into covering it up. Maybe whoever got the boy killed is like some rich families. Maybe the power plant? Oh, the dude! Um, the mayor. Maybe it's like his kid or something. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but... I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? Sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. How did Clive get a hand on these I found files? A autopsy report. What did it say? He must have been According the cop, that, right? It's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the call that mm -hmm. from when we had to call the takeout restaurant. Wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Right. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. She said, uh, Clive, I didn't tell door? anyone. Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the Dang. police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. <laughs> The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for 
any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? Mm. We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Tree. Damn. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, Clive is no like ordinary janitor. <laughs> we need to figure out our next step. Oof, 3 a.m. God, you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. <laughs> Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Beats me. But we gotta do it and we're going to. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan? What now? is the plan? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. We're still playing the record for Dawn. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. What about the... Redman Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, <laughs> Forrest Nash. <laughs> What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. <laughs> so we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's big of you, Plunker. No, oh, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hmm. Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Um. Hmm. Sorry to hear that, but listen, hey, we need to talk. What about? We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't mm -hmm. know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Mm -hmm. Why so certain? Why are you so certain Clive's the whistling man? Because he... All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. He kept copies. No, he didn't. 
I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them, and we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. Hmm. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Thank you, <laughs> Speak Virginia. for yourself, Peggy. God, <laughs> that's God, a hard one. I just want harsh one. this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Okay. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. Sandra's the one who All said right. she found him. Before him. we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah. We need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Mm. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Okay. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the way around. <laughs> How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. By Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, mm -hmm. I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Uh... Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who Wait, know why Jimmy, about then? the death of a boy Named George. What did Jimmy do? Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. For pranking. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river... I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Hmm. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... Sorry. I can't do this. The river? This one? And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. 
Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really hard <laughs> to be blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. He's my <laughs> uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? <laughs> Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday? You'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! <laughs> yes, tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start again, Jack. You son of a bitch! Stop calling us. <laughs> Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. Oh, amazing. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. <sighs> You're on the air, caller. Caller. <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. <laughs> Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> For it just block his number. Forrest, are you okay? <sighs> <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. Too it's okay. much. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Hmm. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked mm. out. I need you to help me get inside. Mm, the coats we were looking at. Mm -hmm. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between town and What if it's not her apartment? I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many she is sus, yeah. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. <gasps> oh, the dog! Uh um uh, 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 mm, uh the dog roller she set the rink she set the roller skate thing roller rickies because the dude likes the boogie and he has a dog i'm guessing you're not a dog person no i'm not it's my neighbor's dog boy i wish he'd muscle that thing and oh and now he's blasting david scopo out of his window Listen, i can't get any david scopo that security system 
or I'm gonna die. Can you get your neighbor's attention? That the whistling man will see me, Forrest. I can't do that. Yeah, I don't trust her. What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. Oh. keypad. Oh. It looks like it wants a, a six digit number. I can uh, I can give her the code to set the alarm. I didn't take a picture of the whole thing, but it says alarm test warning. This will set all security measures. I think six digits sounds like that would be hard. I, to I might remember. still have to go get it. Yes. I don't think it counts Very if hard, I just have a picture. Like this. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Yeah, she is so fishy. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. <laughs> Here's more Scopo. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Mm -hmm. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Nice. Okay. Let's do it. I... God. Okay. So I'm <sighs> okay. at the point now. <laughs> so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments and somewhere... Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, I could probably leave it here and then finish it some other time. And I just keep playing because I'm so curious <laughs> where the story's going to go. <laughs> so we might just finish it. I think it wasn't here. I think it was here. Starling 4000, user manual. Sometimes I pay attention. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Mm hmm. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So the killer is a woman? Do you think it's the boy's mother? Killing everyone who. Oops. Who was responsible for the cover up? Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I've been so afraid. Mm -hmm. What's the code to the gate? This will set off all security measures. 191519. Oh, I can just, I don't need to go. Maintenance code. Alarm deactivation code. So it's this one, right? The code is 191. Five one nine. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Ah! Also, oh, is she? Yeah, really, Ricky. I'm calling the cops. Thank God. Hello, is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forest man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me 
I just mm. enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxi. He's my best friend, you know. Mm. I listen, man. I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. <laughs> That's a done deal. I, thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Oh. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. Hmm. Okay. Uh, music. Uh, do this one. So the whistling man is, is a dawn. woman. That's awesome. I like that Don's been calling for a while. But I'm also surprised that they didn't catch it with the record. When the record that was thrown outside. I was like, how does she know that? Um, I worked it out a while ago. I had my suspicions. I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. I knew she wasn't right. She seemed pretty. I knew she wasn't right. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside. Ooh, to get me outside. Get me outside or mess with us, right? Yeah. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start She with. obviously did. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. <laughs> I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Hmm. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? <laughs> it's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hold on. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. Nice. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando. If I didn't try to help, you know? Mm hmm Appreciated. Uh... You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. The man I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I don't, but... Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the whistling man no sir tonight's the first time i ever heard of him what? could be a man I with a feminine voice three years ago man what do you want from me mm, or multiple people 
Hey, man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help y'all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators. Forrest, gators. we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Is he still breathing? He, yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person. And they just stabbed him. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I'll get you help, but I need to know, where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. Oh, yeah. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. Uh. And then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. Leave it. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Oh. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something, or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Just listen. drive out in a regular car. Here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, Get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. Mm. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. I know that one. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. that I would. sense, though. I've seen a lot of horror movies. That was a lot of info, but <laughs> I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Okay. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Oh, okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We 
need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Uh, I'm getting nervous again. <laughs> and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Okay. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? Mm -mm -mm. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. <laughs> We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? Looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Uh. Okay. She did say to secure it. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Well, cleaning rags would be good, but are they clean or have they been used? Is the <laughs> question. Was it clean laundry? This is just to secure it. Okay, this is your jacket. Sorry about this, Casey. I think it's best we use your jacket. It's probably less likely to bleed through. It's just a jacket. Give me a second. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right, give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know. Yeah, what a time, Peggy. Control. What's going on? You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. So what? Oh. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. Mm -hmm. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She can't drive. Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Mm -hmm. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. <laughs> so, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. Hmm. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. Is it's it a locked? life or death situation, I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Sensitive? Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. <clears throat> right. There is something else. I'm not going to like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? Floppy disks? I'm talking about floppy disks. 
Floppy disks are like these futuristic, futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy <laughs> and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. Wow. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. Do you want to put on music? Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Sure. Should I just go? Are we leaving the radio on silent? I guess we are. Master of unlocking. Reggie's office is downstairs, right? <laughs> I want to believe. I'm here. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries. We still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Could this be it? Pizza delivery killer who kills a pizza cutter with a pizza cutter. Never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in his final girl's boyfriend. <laughs> Protagonist is college student Megan. Surname to follow. <laughs> okay, let's see. First aid to the injured. Reginald Scott. Looks like I need a four digit code. Right. X forever. Need to write pitch document, good title. Hmm. Hint, very important date. Oh. 1107. Oh, that's a lot. Personnel file Nash. Uh, let's have a look. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf. Oh, wait, I'm Nash. <laughs> Right. Sorry. I'm sorry, I need to focus on possible candidates. Oh, I am interested I about Peggy's file, time. though. Um. Brad, as our station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places in the diner. What's the point? Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. They ended up missing most of our first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth to mouth. <laughs> of course he did. Oh, Barbara? No. Karen? Karen has really stepped up her duties. Mentoring Peggy. Starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are getting strategically timed. Okay. So, last but not least, John. Bunch of medical equipment in his home that he procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that legal? Refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he has... A, he was a war medic. John Hedges. Okay. Peggy. Very curious. 
Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? <laughs> you need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can. Don't waste time. Their collection of cocktail right. parasols. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. Um, well... Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Yeah. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please, pick up! Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? She can't... Hey. Ooh. What's happening? What do I do? Uh He's going into shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate his legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. The jacket. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. Yes, okay. Just give me a second. Mm. Uh, uh, sorry. Blankets, sorry. nice. Jason's blankets there was bandages. Sh should I get him new ones? Or oh god. Additional. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. I want to you believe still have something you can use. Okay. Hold on, please. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I'm done. You're gonna be okay, Jason. Just relax now, okay? Sorry. Scared. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna? Uh. He's gonna be fine. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay, okay? Okay. Please. I, I can't give him what he needs. Please sit down. No. The voice acting is so good right, in this boy, game. We need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing John. Well. John Hedges. So you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Hey, John. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. Um, somebody has been stabbed. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or. Never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. 
Oh, John, John. We'll let him coming through. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me about someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Casey is the Come best on. girlfriend ever. <laughs> that the show moves on we're sending our best wishes to Jason we did it well after all that excitement I think we could use some music uh, come back upstairs when you're ready okay stab in the toilet record forest very a fitting music. <laughs> You'll like this next song. <laughs> it's getting pretty late. This might be your last. Jason got stabbed, so but he's going. all right. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll. You Let's do it. it. Oh, we've got another call coming through too. Okay. Time to turn the music off. I know. Back to I work here. Point sixteen. The scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forest. It's Brother me, Ricky. Ricky. Oh, How you hey, doing? Nice good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Ah, oh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Mm hmm. Oh, what's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallows High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, the he hazing. was on our team, too. Oh, was it a hazing gone wrong? Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. Girlfriend? There a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before. Or see her after that i never even got her name man i just remember he called her bean bean then what did she look like please tell us anything you remember i just remember a pretty girl man i'm sorry ricky you said the party Blonde, didn't last brunette. long what happened like we were just having a good time and then the next thing i knew everyone was running for their life i looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And... And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like... 
If anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. That's why he was drinking. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but... Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. <laughs> Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What? What's up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We should have more records. We'll be right back <laughs> after this. Final breath. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest. I'm glad I got Hey, back Leslie. Here. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator. Take this off the air. From Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. Oh, been we're close. In, but haven't been able to get through it till now. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. Mm. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come okay. in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. A long shot, you say? The whistling man already called up a few times. <sighs> I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town. So if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines Heck. now. Morris Nash's interview of a life. Hell yeah. Anyway. I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Let's hope so. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Bye-bye bye then. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. Mm. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Here Nash. we go. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Okay. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Mm. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he gonna be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. 
Thank awesome. You so if you haven't been there, then God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? <laughs> Is this Forrest? Whoa. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that... Yeah. I needed to call you. Why were you being stabbed? I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Mm -hmm. Give us information. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean... He was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. Hmm? It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Yeah. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone, started an almighty panic Damn. with those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream, Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. What's her actual name? He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? Jesus. What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? An M? I don't, uh, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago, in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack? Broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Okay. Well, people keep thinking it's her, but then it can't just be Peggy if it is. I don't think it's Peggy, but... Um, because she's literally been in the room the whole time. 
while Jason got stabbed as well, so there at least has to be a second person then. She did say her sister took off, yeah, after the dad died. No, the dad took off? Wait, I'm going the wrong way. I forget what she said exactly. Huh. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? This is so dark as well. I can barely see anything. Was it here? She said a big red button. Oh. That must be it. Boom! We've got power! Okay. I knew it. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. How are you gonna do that though? There's no intercom here. The whistling tunes. Um, I keep thinking it. I want to just say this real quick. The whistling tune is like do do do, and it's exactly that Japanese like moikai madada yo. So it's kind of creepy. It's like hide and seek. Japanese hide and seek. I heard him walk. Thanks. <laughs> what the hell? What? What? Oh! Oh! Okay, why lock me in? Hmm. Oh no. Peggy! Where'd you go? Oh. No way. This can't be Whoa, happening. Whoa, strong. Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Uh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! It was Teddy. Go. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out. So it is multiple Teddy. people. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world... Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, the, 
that he... Yes, Forrest. And I had a son. So oh. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper mm -hmm. office. Don't think I forgot about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? Then are you? Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? Marie Campbell. George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been Look left. years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Marie Campbell. So, not Don, huh? No. Not Don. What are you going to... Uh, uh. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Part with the kitty. Listen to me. I saw you... the kitty, yeah. Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest... Love talk. M. Ah. Can help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Ah. Why should I help you? Why should I play any? I'm stalling in this? as much as I, I can. I think you believe in justice. You think this is justice? You have no goddamn idea, Forrest. These people. So maybe the mom said that the dad took off was murdered, but murdered? Uh, just to cover up listen, that their dad I... was actually a killer. I said you speak when you're or actually no, to. it's separate, no. <sighs> Whistling man is separate. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. If you say so, I'm not really in a position to argue. I'm happy we have your cooperation. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek. And if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Hey, <laughs> Marie. Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't, start talking. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay, our first team party was coming up, and when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Mm. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. Rod, Marie. And Roller Ricky. He was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came 
came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that mm -hmm. night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. Screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Should I argue with her? Would that... No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Hit him, Marie. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh, God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. The good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. It's just a joke. I could stall for time here. Mm. How did you feel? How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. She went in on it. Small and confused. And Tell me what happened next. I suddenly recognized. It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. It was the whistling man. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off whistling point. Mm. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the whistling man, too, and... I didn't push him, goddammit! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. That's and your point to stop, to though. Over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know. How about just saying, joke. stop, it's just a joke. If he had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all, you did. I mean, you're on air. Even if you didn't push him, you still chased him to his death. I can't be blamed. 
for someone not getting a choke. Mm. I think Marie would disagree. But if you really thought that way, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then who knows? <laughs> Not anymore. What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night. Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I take it that's a yes? Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... Even still. She should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That mm. killed the story. That's why they went for the newspapers, William. Yeah. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. When will the killing end, Marie? End? When does it end? You can't kill the world. This has to stop sometime. It has to. It never should have started. I shouldn't have pushed my door down the cliff. I should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met before he joined the football team. Was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Uh oh. Hi. Um. <laughs> Wait, it has to be the football field then, right? Oh, school gym. You're at Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters. But yes, we're here. I thought they were anyway, football players. I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. When he shot for basketball, Where? oh. Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy? You gotta help me. I. Quiet. You'll talk more later. Sisters. I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god. I thought you. And here I was. Forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. You're a 
remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. Mm. And when you walked in, you found out that my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged mom and dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. What? Oh. I, wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Yeah, right. Eugene Stein? Because his parents... The parents died in the bus right. accident. Oh. Eugene's parents were there that night, too. They got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child... Oh, my God. Died, Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. No, I have the card right here. God. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. I what knew it. Say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love him. I. Well, I. Henderson police! Freeze! Oh. No! Henry! Get out of there! Oh! Peggy! Ah! We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect! Henderson police! Freeze! Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. A tale of two sisters. Peggy. She needs help. Now. We got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. Uh oh. But you didn't catch her? It's over, Forrest. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night. Uh. Through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This 18. has been Forrest Nash. <laughs> good night and good morning. Let's speak tomorrow. It's been a scream. And it's been a scream. <laughs> Look at all the stuff I threw on the ground there. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa, are these the credits? Oh. We did it! Ponty's Pizza! Oh my god. Amazing. Peggy. These are the voice actors? God, that TV's loud though. I'll watch the credits from here. <laughs> that was amazing. That was so good. I could not put it down. I was like, I should probably do it again tomorrow or something. Stream another day this week to finish up the game. But I just could not stop. I had to keep going. <laughs> another great game from Team 17. Damn. That was really, really good. I wonder if it's actually possible to get some people killed? We did pretty good, right? I've said this before, but I remember 
I remember I either read or saw it somewhere. Like someone said, a story is well written when you you give the reader just enough or listener just enough information that they figure it out. That they figure it out. Uh, oh, this is the pursuit right now, maybe. So Marie is running to Whistling Point. Uh, a good writer knows to like put enough bits into a story that just before the reveal comes, you figure it out just in time and you feel really smart for figuring it out. And that's exactly what this game did, because every time just before something happened, I was like, oh, maybe hazing gone wrong. Oh, maybe it's Teddy, but it was like, it wasn't super early on. It was like before it was happening. That's how smart this is written. Are we getting more? I knew it. So that's what happened to Marie then. And then the sun got away. Yeah. That was amazing. That was really, really good. So impressive. Great voice acting. God, the voice acting was so good. Not at any point was I like, ooh, that wasn't that great, or that could have been better, you know? Oh man, what a power stream. Five and a half hours. Oof. But yeah, some games are just so good, you can't stop. You need to keep going and you need to see it through to the end. <laughs> So fun, yeah.